And with that, folks, I've just switched the video on. <laughs> Hi, thanks for watching. My name is Mark Collard. I'm director of Playmio. And uh, to coin a phrase that my good friend and uh, colleague Chad Littlefield has used, over the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you an active stream of consciousness. Uh, I don't plan to actually switch anything off. I'm going to share with you and my screen um, my experience with this new artificial intelligence, this piece of software called Chat. GPT, chat GPT. Now perhaps you've heard of it, uh, maybe you've even played with it, but uh, if, if not, or even in either of those two cases, I'm going to share a few things about it. One, what is it? Two, its power. I'm sure it's going to blow your mind. It certainly did in my first few minutes with it, but also its limitations. I'm sure we're going to come across some mistakes and errors and failures, but leave you with some inspiration for what is possible in this space. First of all, you will need to set up an account. So I'm just reading it off my screen now. It, go to chat.openai, that's AI for artificial intelligence.com, chat.openai.com. Uh, and you will need to set up an account. So just a, uh, an email address and a password. It costs you nothing. And it's uh, still an experience that is very much research based. It's in its fourth iteration, uh, which is by far its most successful and most amazing. Uh, but of course, as we will probably experience, there are some uh, fallibilities to it as well. And they want us to play with it because they are learning more about what is possible in this space by the millions of people who are playing with it and having some fun. So let me take you now to that part once you've logged in and you'll come to this really empty screen. If you don't know where to start, you could start with any one of these examples. It's called Chat. GPT as if you were chatting to someone. So you'll ask it questions um, and it will spit out its responses. Uh, now I'll let you play and think of all the questions that you might want to have fun with. But here's one that I found most fascinating. I'm going to repeat it now with you. So I'm going to start a new chat first of all by just opening up this new, uh, a new window in the top left hand corner. And down the bottom here, I'm just going to ask a very selfish question. What do you know about Mark Collard? I mean, who, who of us has not put their name into Google to find out more about themselves? Now, of course, there's lots of Mark Collards out there. So let's help it uh, narrow its search about who I am. That is the director of Playmio.com. Oh, let's make sure we spell it correctly. All right, let's see what happens. This is live, folks. I've just switched on the camera and here's what happens? Now it's presently thinking. Oh, it's taking a lot longer than I would normally expect. Now, notice how slow it is. Now, that was, <laughs> that was a horrible piece of radio and video television silence there. Uh, but there must be a lot of people playing with it at the moment because this is much slower than I experienced when I first played with it about a week ago. Mark Collard is a well-known expert in the field of experiential learning. I'm sure you can read this on the screen as, as well as I am. So far, this is looking really, really good. Um, 30 years of experience in leading teams, facilitating groups, that all sounds about right. He's also the author of several books, including Serious Fun, that's correct. In addition to his work with Plamio, Mark Collard is a highly sought after speaker and facilitator. Okay. Now, I want to mention to you that when I did the same inquiry about a week ago, in this first little blurb, it came up with that I had won an award at the Australian Institute for Training and Development, the AITD. It's like the upper echelons of corporate training um, and training and development here in Australia. That was in 2018 and no one sent me the letter. I had no clue that I had actually won this award. So I then asked some more questions about that. As it turns out, that was an error. It even gave me a web address when I said, can you share the web address for when uh, Mark won that award? Of course, they didn't know that it was me asking the questions and it came up with nothing. The actual web address was not existent. It didn't take me to any pages. So there was an example of an error. I have no clue where it must have uh, crawled that information from the internet. So I'd be interested to know what you might find out about yourself or somebody else or your organization. Check the details. My guess is, yeah, it's probably pretty good, but it won't be absolutely accurate. Now, 
already in the week since asking the identical question, it has corrected itself. So it no longer shows that I won that award because when I asked a series of questions and I kept on saying, uh, no, I don't think he did a win or that web, web address does not actually take me to that award. It obviously is now fed into the system and has now removed that information from there. Let's go a little uh, another, another step forward. Again, I'm just giving you a few clues of things that you could ask. So what is Mark's? Now it's going to understand that I'm talking about Mark Collard because I've already mentioned the name Mark. So I don't need to actually say Mark Collard again. Remember, you're having a chat, it's a conversation. What is Mark's best selling book? Let's see what comes up. Oh, this is a little bit quicker. Best selling book is No Props, Great Games with No Equipment. That's actually my second version of the book. And probably, um, given that it's been out a lot longer than most, uh, it probably is my best selling, but uh, equally will be surpassed by the most current version, No Props, No Problem. And then it gives a little bit more information there about that. So that's the sort of stuff it can do by just simply asking questions. I know for many people, they're integrating AI into their live chat. So you're not actually talking to a real person, but it's learned enough about the organization that it can actually talk with you as if it was a real person. Remember, it's all artificial. Let's go to the next level. It's like, what does Playmio mean? A lot of people ask me that question all the time, the name of my organization. So what does Playmio, I'm gonna put it in quotes. Again, it won't know what this means. What does the word, let's actually just help it understand the word Playmio mean. Let's see what it comes up with. Um, incidentally, for those who aren't familiar with Playmio, it's a nonsensical word, it means nothing. In fact, uh, many, many years ago when I first developed the company, uh, we actually discovered, oh, there it is, sorry, I didn't have it on the screen. Um, it was just an acronym that we made up. But as far as I know, the word Playmio does not have a specific dictionary meaning. That is absolutely true. It's a made up word that was created by me when he founded his online resource for group facilitators and team building professionals. There is nowhere on my site where that text appears. It shouldn't even appear on anyone else's website either. So it has actually created that sentence. However, Mark Collard has stated that the name Playmio was inspired by the Latin word playum, which means to play or engage in games. Now, that's wonderful, but it's completely not true. I've never said that. I've never come across that word. So I'm interested to know where that comes from. He added the suffix Mio to give the name a modern twist and make it sound more like a website or online platform. Who knows where that came from? It sounds legit, but it's actually not true. Uh, overall, the name Playmio is intended to convey the idea of playfulness, engagement, and fun. And all of that is true. So look, you might start with this as, what are some of the ways in which you could use it? A billion different ways, but it might be that you're just looking for ideas. So for example, my book, Serious Fun. Mark has written a book called Serious Fun. You might remember that it actually talked about that book earlier uh, in the transcript. Can you provide or can you create five more or five subtitles to the book? Now, it already has a subtitle, but I'm just to know what it comes up with. So, Mark has written a book called Serious Fun. Can you create five subtitles for the book? Let's say for the book. Oh, as I said, stream of consciousness. Here we go. Let's see what it comes up. Now, the actual uh, subtitle for the book is your step-by-step -step guide to leading remarkably outright or remarkably fun programs that make a difference. So here we go. So they actually tell you this is, oh, it's close. That's actually not quite how to create remarkably. It's more step-by-step, -step, but that's okay. It's close enough. The ultimate guide to engaging, transforming teams, unleashing creativity, making learn fun. Now, if I was in the process of writing my book, and we're talking over 10 years ago now, I might have actually used that as a way to get me started to brainstorm. All right, now let's move to the next step. One of my featured developments for the database of online learning group games and activities is uh, the ability to create activity flows. Right now, Playmio just bangs it out of the park if you said, I'm looking for a specific activity, singular. Just one activity, an energizer, a team builder, with this number of people, with this equipment, with a video. It's very good at helping you find the perfect game or activity, singular. 
But what I would like it to now do, and that what everything that we've been doing is to build up to this point where we create an activity flow, a sequence. What do we start with? What comes next? What comes after that? What do you finish with? So let's see what happens. Now, I've actually done a little bit of this in advance, but I've not actually asked it this question. But I would like to know, can it help me create a series of activity flows? So can you create a uh, flow of activities for my forthcoming group team development program. Let's make sure we spell that correctly. Can you create a flow of activities for my forthcoming group team development program? So I'm giving it a few clues. So let's just see what it might come up with. Sure, here's a sample flow of activities you could use for a group team development. Icebreaker. Okay, that's pretty basic, so that doesn't surprise me that it would come up for that, visions and goals. So this is answering the question in a very generic sense. I'm going to give it very specific information in a moment. So this actually doesn't surprise me. It's a good flow. You, you want to break the ice, invite people to interact from the beginning, maybe create some goals around why you're doing what you're doing. You do some significance around the team building, and then you finish with some form of reflective activity before you move into some action plans. That sounds pretty basic, and I'm sure there's a 10,000 websites out there that it might have crawled that information from. It certainly didn't come from Playmio. But now I'm gonna feed it specific activities. So this is something I've prepared in advance, knowing that I wanted to do this, but I didn't wanna have you sit there for 15 minutes waiting for me to actually type it all out. So let me just copy and paste. So copy. All right, I'm going to here is a list of 10 activities I could use in, oh man, could use in my team development program. Okay, so I then add that data. All right, so you can't see it all on screen, but some of the, all of these programs, all of this content in a summary has come directly from Playmio's database. So one, two, three, cross down connections, through the ringer in no particular order. I just threw them down. Categories, must choose, not a not, Ubuntu cards, card talk, chicka boom. Can you suggest a sequence of activities from this list that will develop team skills for a group of 30 strangers that can be delivered in 90 minutes? Notice that I've given specific time. So in here, in a very brief way, I've given the, AI machine, a little bit of information to help it make a good decision. Let's just see what happens. So I'm going to hit go and let's see what happens. Remember, I've given it the content. Certainly, don't you love its very positive attitude? Here's a possible sequence of activities that could be delivered in 90 minutes to a group of 90, uh, 30 strangers. It starts with one, two, three. That's a paired activity. That's probably something I could start with. Absolutely. Ubuntu's really soft. Uh, opportunity to passively interact with others. Categories, same thing, through the ringer. Now this is a more of a team development, a lot more highly in interactive, must choose, and finish with a debrief and reflection. Ah, here we go. So it even talks about wanting to use a reflection and it's used fill the gap for that purpose. And all together, I'm presuming, a bit of quick math, it turns out to be close to 90 minutes. And then it reminds me, this sequence of activities will help the group develop their teamwork, communication, blah, blah, blah. You can read this on the screen as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned, Chad Littlefield did a very similar exercise last week and it blew my mind, it blew his mind and all of his uh, viewers. And I'm sure this is gonna do the same for you. Our plans is to basically feed the million and a half words that exist on Playmio.com, the extraordinary rich content that sits behind the paywall of Playmio to help our users and our members be able to click a button and create a starting point. Not that that's what you're gonna follow, a sequence of do this, do that, do that. But for a lot of people who are just starting out or even just experienced practitioners looking for some new ideas, this could be a piece of software that could be very, very useful. So I'm interested to know what you think. This is a little bit of fun. It's completely free. You can jump in and do your own experimentation. But what do you see in here? Maybe it's purely for, um, for brainstorming purposes. 
you know, maybe you do want it to write a letter in a particular style uh, for sorts of things that you can do. For example, Chad last week actually fed it an actual video transcript of his actual voice. So the words he was using and the way he would use them and asked the machine to create something as if he was talking it. He couldn't change a word. It was so good at recreating a short thing by basically shortening it down to what could I say if I had to do this more quickly. Pretty fascinating stuff. So let's um, let's hand it to you. As I said, this was like just a stream of consciousness that I wanted to share with you to have a little bit of a play. Uh, again, that website that you can check out for your own benefit and have a bit of a play is chat.openai, so it's six characters, dot com. Uh, chat.openai.com and uh, have a play with it. In the comments, let me know. Does this scare you? Does it intimidate you? Are you excited? Are you inspired? Can you think of ways in which you might be able to use this? I'm really interested to see what you have in mind. Certainly in the question that I posed to my community some weeks ago, what trends are you seeing in the world of education? Um, I was almost stunned that the artificial intelligence didn't come up as the very first answer. There was all these other very obvious answers uh, in terms of social emotional learning um, and open learning and online learning and stuff like that. That made sense. But honestly, what's trending right now is how can we harness the power, but also limit the, uh, the fallibility of this thing called artificial intelligence. Let us know. This has been Mark Collard from playmeo.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Bye for now.